Today's video sponsor is GVG Mall, where using my SKG discount code leads to a 25% off across several products, making a Windows 10 serial key only $16. After the payment, you'll receive the key in your account and all you need to do is to introduce it in your Windows settings and BAM! You have an activated system. Hello guys, I shit can plays. I'm Fabio Pisco and welcome to my channel. Ah oh, shit, here we go again. So, today we're gonna talk about a bit of the rumors that have been uh, floating on the internet about the new RX 7700 XT Navi 33, okay? We're gonna read the news or the, the rumor on the WCCF Tech website and I will also comment and give you some tips, like usual, okay? So, as for the title, we have already the AMD Radeon RX 7700 XT Navi 33 graphics cards detailed with 6 nanometers RDNA GPU, 8 gigabytes GDDR6, equal to the 6900 XT in rasterization and faster in ray tracing, around 200 watts power draw and higher efficiency than Nvidia Lovelace. So let's start from the beginning, okay? 8 gigabytes GDDR6 tell us automatically that it will have only 128 bit buzz or 256 but since the tendency is to actually decrease uh, the buzz width I'm almost sure that they will decrease from 192 on the 6700 XT to 128 on the 7700 XT I mean the 5700 XT has like 256 bit buzz the 6700 has 192 and this one will most likely have 128 but okay so equal to the RX 6900 XT in rasterization. This will be most likely due um, to higher clocks, higher IPC, okay, within the RDNA 3 architecture. So it is way more efficient. It has higher IPC, lower latencies. Uh, the cores do more work. Also, um, also higher clocks, higher frequencies, okay. So that's one of the things and faster in ray tracing. And this will most likely be due to the new RT cores on the RDNA 3 uh, architecture that will be way better than on the RDNA 2. So basically, uh, NVIDIA, um, NVIDIA and Pure, the, uh, the RTX 3000 series cards, have the second generation of RT cores of NVIDIA, which were way better than the, the first generation, and the same will apply to the AMD cards. The RX 6000 series are the first AMD GPUs with RT cores, so ray tracing cores, um, and this ones will be these ones will be the second generation ones. So these cores will be much more efficient. It is it is expected. So we actually have a GPU, or at least it seems like we will have a GPU as fast as the 6900 XT in rasterization and faster in ray tracing, which is amazing if we consider only 200 watts power draw since the 6900 XT can easily go up to 400 watts, okay? So it's like half the power draw with the same or better performance. And interestingly enough, I said that several times some months ago that I expected it to be like this. I didn't expect it to be like 8 gigabytes only, of course, but I mean... All the other parts, like the 6900 XT performance and better ray tracing, I, I said it before and it seems to be correct. Interesting. Uh, okay, so let's start with this. So, the AMD RDNA 3 GPU lineup will consist of both monolithic and multi-chiplet solutions. The Navi 33 GPU is considered the mid-range chip and is an optimization of the Navi 21 GPU on the newer RDNA 3 architecture. It is based on a 6 nanometers monolithic design and should measure between 360 and 460 millimeters square. That's an 11 to 30% reduction in die area compared to the Navi 21 GPU, which is powering the high end Radeon RX 6000 6, <laughs> oh 6, lineup and features a die size of 520 millimeters square. Key features of the Navi 33 GPU are going to be. So, let's just go here. The first one is TSMC 6 nanometers process with a monolithic GPU design. Okay, the, 6700, the, the 7700 XT will be a monolithic GPU die, okay? 
monolithic GPU design, so one die only. And that will be, from what I know, that will be only for the 7700 XT. And the lower cards, of course. The cards uh, after that, so the cards of higher tier, like for example the, the 7800, 7800 XT and 7900 XT will be MCM, so multi-chip module, they will have two dies. Okay, the, it's kind of um, a dual GPU, it's a bit different. It is. It doesn't work like a dual GPU, so the system won't read it as a dual GPU, but it will work with two dies, which will be way more efficient in my opinion. And the power, the power that those beasts will bring will be insane. insane. Now, RDNA 3 graphics core, increased clocks and efficiency, 8GB DDR6 memory optimized across a 128-bit bus, so like I told you, like I told you in the beginning of the video, yeah, 128-bit bus. I mean, the, the Infinity Cache has to be way, way more if they are going to make the 6700 XT perform as good as the 6900 XT with only 128-bit, 128-bit bus. Sorry, so it's half the bit bus. Um, I mean, RDNA 3 must be spectacular if it can perform the same with half the bit bus. And I, I, I'm almost sure that at least at 1080p or 1440p, it may perform equal or better than the 6900 XT, but at 4K, it will perform worse, most likely, most likely. So faster GDDR6 memory speeds, obvious. Rasterization performance equal or greater than the RX 6900 XT, and ray tracing performance greater than the RX 6900, 6900 XT, once again, better and improved RT cores, okay? So this is supposed to be the RX 6700 XT. So as you can see, the Infinity Cache is way better, way more, like I told you before. It, ha it has to be more in order to kind of compensate the lack of bit bus. I think that uh, the 6700 XT has kind of, let me just see, 6700 XT specs. So yes, we have 96 megabytes of L3 cache. So from 96 megabytes to more than double, okay? 96 megabytes and we supposedly have 256 megabytes here. So it's more than double the cache. So they are actually reducing the bit buzz and they are adding cache. That will be that will compensate lots of things. One of the reasons why the power draw is so low, it's because it has less, way less physical units than the, um, than the 6900 XT, so less cores, less compute units, less TMUs and so on. Uh, but at the same time, it has way more frequency, it has way more IPC, it has way more cache, so it, it can actually have lower power draw with the same performance, okay? Now, you see here that we have the GCD with two shader engines. It, it is the same for the Ryzen CPUs. For example, the Ryzen CPUs are separated. The, um, for example, the Ryzen 3000 series, they have CCX, which are the core complex, where the cores are in. Then we have the CCDs. So I already have the image here, as you can see. So we have the Zen 2 layout and the Zen 3, okay? It is the same applied to the GPUs. Here we have two of these. So the Ryzen 9 will have two of these and the Ryzen, the Ryzen 5 will have two of these but separated as well. So the Ryzen 9 will have two of these while the Ryzen 5, for example, will have just one. So the six cores, 12 threads have just one and I think that the same applies for the Ryzen 7 but the Ryzen 9s, for example, since they have more cores, they need to, they, they need to utilize both. And that's why, for example, when you, when you go to A, the 64, you actually have the right speeds way lower, actually cut by half, comparing to the read and copy values because you have only one of these, okay? That's why. Uh, we have an early leak from April, which is where we are, April, of course. Um, but I don't think that you want to see this. What you want to see is... This is what you want to see. So, 
We have the Navi, uh, the, the Navi 21, which is the 6900 XT, and we have the, the Navi 33, which is the 7700 XT. So, the 6900 XT has 330 watts, but it can easily reach 400 watts if overclocked. Now, listen, even, and I repeat, even, the 6900 XT has only 128 megabytes of infinity cache, while the Navi 33, the 6700 XT, is supposed to have 256 megabytes, while the, the, the other cards like the higher tiers are supposed to have even more infinity cache. So, the, the 7800 XT, 384 megabytes, now with 192-bit buzz, the current has 256, and the, 16, the 7900 XT will have 512 megabytes cache. So we're talking about half gigabyte of cache. I remember the GPUs having like 10 megabytes cache, 30 megabytes cache max, and we're talking about a GPU with half a gigabyte of cache. Things go crazy, I mean crazy. Um, and even for the lower tier one, we can see, for example, in terms of uh, specs, we have the Navi 33 just have one uh, two shader engines com in comparison to the four shader engines on the 6900 XT. Also has half the WGPs and also has half the compute units. Okay, so basically the compute uni units that you see here, 40 compute units, are the same compute units presented on the 6700 XT and the 5700 XT. So, if we go into the 6700 XT, the card is way faster than the 5700 XT with the same compute units, and the same will happen here. With the same compute units, it will be way faster. In terms of cores per die, it is the same, interestingly enough, so we have 5,120 5, cores per die, okay? It's for the memory bus. Half, once again, but once again, double the, um, double the infinity cache. So we have double the SPs per WGP, and we have double the infinity cache. While we're having half the memory bus, half the shader engines, and half the compute units. Also half the GPU, WGP. So... It's a lot of things to assimilate, so it is half in some scenarios, uh, in some parts, and double in others to compensate. At the same time, we can actually get lower power draw while having better performance, so it is a very, very good thing. And the other higher-end GPUs using MCM multi-chip module will be crazy. They will be crazy, believe me. It will be just a, a major and a massive leap in terms of performance. We will finally be seeing something like 4K 120 FPS in some games. And we'll, we may finally kind of actually have 4K 60 FPS with ray tracing activated because the ray tracing performance will be way, way better with these GPUs, okay? The same applies to, to NVIDIA Lovelace that will have way, way better ray tracing performance. So... I'm excited. I'm excited to see what comes from here because things this year and next year in terms of GPUs and CPUs will be crazy with Zen 4, RDNA 3, uh, NVIDIA's Lovelace, the new Intel architecture, the new Intel GPUs this year as well. I will buy one to test because I just want, I just want to do it. So this year will be crazy, okay? I guess there's not much more to say. We also have a render year of the 6700 XT. I don't believe this is the 6700 XT. This is the 7700 XT. This is actually the 7900 XT since it's water cooled. But yeah, it looks great. So guys, basically that's it. Like I told you, this year will be amazing. Let me know what you think in the comment section if you think that the, 60, that the 7700 XT, God damn it, the 7700 XT will actually perform as great or as good as the 6900 XT in rasterization. And if you think that it will outperform the 6900, the 6900 XT in terms of ray tracing, that's almost certain. Uh, but let me know what you think. I really want to know your opinions because... I want to test this card so bad. I'm I'm not more I'm I'm not much into news like news videos like I'm doing now, but I do love testings. And believe me, this is one of the few videos that I do in terms of news because I don't like to do them, but I had to do this one because 
<laughs> it's so awesome. But I will test the crap out of these GPUs once they're out. Thanks a lot for watching. Don't forget to hit like, subscribe, and share this video, and see you in the next one. Bye.